How's it going everyone? Welcome back to our next episode on how to create JavaScript. Now in this lesson you're going to learn about something called an array. And an array is very similar to when you learned about something called a variable some episodes ago. Now just to recap, a variable is a way for us to store information inside a container and an array on the other hand is a way for us to store many pieces of information inside one container. So instead of having you know one container with just one item inside of it, we can have one container with many pieces of information stuffed into to it so we can use it for a later purpose. So the way we create an array is very similar to when we create variables. So in this example here, where I have nothing inside my script tags, we can go ahead and create a variable by declaring a variable, and then we'll call it some kind of name like items, just to give it something. And usually with a variable, we just set it equal to, and then something like a string or a number or something but in this case since we have many pieces of information that needs to go inside this container i'm going to create a pair of brackets now inside the brackets we can go and create all the different lists of data that we need inside this specific array here and when we create these brackets we automatically create an array instead of a variable so what i can do is i can say we have for example a string called bottle then i'm going to create a second string called something like camera and just to do something more, we can create a third string and just go ahead and call this one juice, just to have something. So right now we have an array with three different pieces of data inside of it. Now, this is one way we can declare a variable and I'm not going to confuse you with a bunch of different ways, but just to show you, there's another way we could have potentially written this out depending on the purpose later on when we start learning about loops and that sort of thing. Uh, we might want to do it in a slightly different way. So. Another way we could do it is just declaring the variable. So we're declaring, again, the same variable called items. And I'm just going to close it. So we just declared it, but we haven't done anything to it. Then later on, we can go ahead and say, well, we have this variable called items that I want to set equal to whatever we did up here. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it down. So this does the exact same thing as the above. We just declared it first, and then we created the values for the variable afterwards, creating an array instead. Now, just to be clear, the way that we usually do it when we just need to create an array is the first method up here. It's not till when we start talking about loops and that sort of thing inside JavaScript that you need to worry about creating a array this way instead of the above. Now, when we create arrays inside JavaScript, we don't have to just use strings like we did in this case here. We can use any kind of data we have inside JavaScript in order to include inside an array. So right now I could, for example, say instead of camera, we could say we have a number called four. And instead of juice, we could create a Boolean, which we also talked about in the data types episode called true. So we can create any kind of data inside these arrays. We can even have arrays within arrays, but that's not something we're going to talk about in this episode. We'll talk about that when we get to a later episode. So now we created this array here. So now the next question is, how do we actually get the data and show it inside a website? So what we can do is I can go down to the next line and I can go ahead and say we have a console log to give an example because that is a way we can get data out on the website inside the console. I can go inside the parentheses and then when I want to reference to a piece of data inside the array, I just write the name of the array, brackets, and then I need to refer to the index of the data inside the array. Now the index is the position of the data inside the array. So if we were to take a look at this array up here, you can see the first data we have inside of it is the one called bottle, which is a string. The second piece of data is number four. And the third piece of data is true, which is a Boolean. Now, when I refer to the first data inside the array, we need to use index number zero, because when it comes to JavaScript or any sort of programming language, we typically start at the number zero and then one, two, three, four, and so on and so on. So if I want to refer to the first index, which is bottle, then I write zero inside the brackets here, then if we were to go inside my website, refresh, you can see we get bottle inside the console. If I want to refer to the second data, we say one. And then when I go inside the website, refresh, you can see we get four. So this is how we refer to the data and spit it out inside our website. Now, the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to arrays is that we can reassign values inside the array. So right now we have the items array. If I want to change four to, for example, eight, then I can go right after we declared the array before we actually console lock it. And I can say items, brackets, and then refer to the index of uh, the number four, which is one. 
because remember we started zero, so zero, one, two, and then I'm going to set it equal to something else. We can also change it into a string or whatever we want to do, but let's just go ahead and change it into eight. And then if we were to console log it inside the website, you can see that we now get eight inside the console. So this is a way that we can redo or reassign a new value inside an array. So this is what an array is, and this is something to use quite often when we create JavaScript. So when we get to a couple of projects in not so long time, then we will be creating something using arrays as well. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.